Welcome back, everybody. Everything is a choice. My name is Rick, author of Everything is a Choice, and today is really just to get back to the basics. Um, the whole thing with Everything is a Choice is there's a lot of layers to it, a lot, because it really does eventually get down to the very core of who you are. And the reality of things are is throughout our entire life, we're never taught to really understand self-reflection. I think a lot of times we can be delusional or in denial about how good we are at understanding ourselves because you've been around you your entire life. But the reality is, is when you really start challenging the principles and or the existence of why you do what you do or what are your true belief systems or does the series of choices that you make really reflect what you want? Then people start getting defensive and upset and freaking out because we realize we don't have those answers. It seems like you should, but you don't. So let's get into the basics of everything is a choice. And by doing this, I'm going to kind of just say, what is everything is a choice? The reason we do everything is a choice training is because the opportunities are everywhere around you. They always are. They have been the entire time. They're always right in front of you. Most of the time, we're not taught to see with a huge amount of awareness or a high perspective, which means a lot of stuff is in your blind spot. You don't see it. Even if it's always been right in front of you, we run on autopilot all day, literally all day. Now, what I mean by that is every single thing that we're doing is a series of decisions. Turn the light on, turn the light off. What food you're going to eat, what food you're not going to eat. Are you going to drink this? Are you going to drink that? Um, are you going to work out? Are you not going to work out? Are you going to uh, push that down or are you going to say something about it? The, the, I mean, it's all day long. Are you going to walk to the door or are you going to run to the door? Are you going to unlock it or are you going to unlock it? It's, we do a million things throughout the day that's all subconscious. We're on autopilot most of the time. And there's only a few things that are really on your list of things to do that you're conscious about. Now, don't get me mixed up that raising your awareness means I am turning on the light or turning off the light. It's not that extreme, but it's really just a recognition of I'm doing things with purpose or I'm doing things with an awareness of I'm making decisions to move in a direction no matter what. Even if it's bad for what your goals are, you're moving in a direction, period. The point of everything is a choice is that those opportunities to change or to do things differently, they're all around you. Always. The job you're in, the relationship you're in, the, the choices you make for your habits, they're all at any given time all around you. And so you have to train yourself to see them more clearly to make it so your choices reflect what your goals are. Next up, we really have to raise your awareness to the possible outcomes. You have to go like, ah, if I do this, it's possible this could go this way. Is that worth the risk or not for what I want to do? If you can start seeing clearly the way that your choices are going to affect either yourself or others, it makes it a little easier when you're objective to look at those decisions and make those choices a little more effective or advantageous to what it is that you want to do. Next up, you do have to find a degree of accepting accountability or responsibility for the shit you did. And it's actually can be just as simple as just saying, yeah, that's my bad, or yes, I did that, or nope, learn from that one, that's for sure. It doesn't always have to be some shame or blame fest. It's something simple as far as like, learned my lesson from that one. It doesn't have to be horrible. It can just be what it is, but learn from it because that's where the opportunities are always around you. Do you feel terrible and beat yourself up about it? Or can you say, okay, learned what not to do. That mistake was worth it. It's part of it. Accountability, responsibility. The choices are always in front of you. Next up, to have more control and power over how you handle things. And this gets into tapping into stoic philosophy and it's not what happens, it's how you handle it. And that's one of the foundational pieces for everything is a choice. People are like, well, you can't control the rain but you can control what you wear when you're in the rain. Are you putting on raincoat and an umbrella or are you going out there completely exposed to the elements? That's the choice. I can't control that it's snowed outside. 
Are you putting on winter clothes? Are you taking care of yourself to keep yourself warm and protected from the elements? That's what the choices are on how to handle things. And those, again, opportunities are always around you to improve or to learn. How to let go of your burdens. That's one of the next things that we're going to get into is that we are carrying baggage from our lives. And many of you are holding on to baggages that it's not even yours to hold on to. It's an ex's or it's your parents or it's your friends or a tragedy or something that happened in your past that you now have attributed that to being part of your identity, whether you feel like you're a loser or you feel like you're not good enough or you have self-doubt or you live in fear. All of those things are all burdens that are holding you down from whatever you're meant to do in this life. But that's a choice that you would make that I think that across the board, if you can see it, if you see it right in front of you and you're like, there it is, I see that everybody would be able to make a choice because the decisions are generally very simple as far as like, what is the choice? Are you going to do this? Or are you going to do that? Are you going to wear this? You're going to wear that. Are you going to take this action? Are you going to take that action? I think if you step back from it, it makes it much easier just to look at it and you go, well, if I was giving advice for this, that would be the right answer. Until you start adding in all your burdens, you start adding in all your past stuff, you add in your experiences, you've added in the patterns that you've seen from not only yourself, but from others. And now you add a filter to what you think it is instead of what it really is, and it makes the decisions far more complicated. If you let go of the burdens, it makes it so your decisions become simple again, and that gives you your power back. Again, simple to say, not easy to do. To practice change and growth. Change is an actual, that's happening always. It's the one thing in our life that is, is a certainty for sure. Your what, death taxes, I think change should be in there. Everything changes, everything, no matter what it is, it all will change. It, it could be a building. It could be rocks. It could be the weather. It could be, any, it could be humans. Everything is always in a system of change. It just always is. If you leave something be, nature will take over. Everything is going to keep changing, which is why it's so funny that as humans, we suck so much at dealing with change when it's an absolute I'll say it again. It's crazy that we're so bad at change when it's an absolute. Everything changes. We change. Our environments change. We end up moving. That changes. We get a new job. That changes. A relationship fails and a new one starts. It's change. Everything changes. Why are we so bad at it? <laughs> and so by recognizing this, it makes it so that you can practice. How am I going to handle change? How can I see the benefits and the opportunities in this change? How do I move towards a change that's going to benefit what I want more than a change that I have to deal with? You get to move in a direction. And sometimes when we're moving, we fall into our own traps. And that's where the awareness of accountability, responsibility, your burdens, growth, development, you start realizing a lot of these were self-made. We made them. That's our trap. I made the trap. And then I blame everybody else for me making it. These things are always in front of you. They're constant. Change is constant. Growth is constant. Everything gets to be what you want it to be. You just got to keep going that direction. Don't dig your own traps because it's nobody else's fault but your own. The choices are always around us. They always are. That we can, I can agree on that always. There's always stuff. And truth is, I use the, uh, the idea of a Rubik's cube, just the idea of a Rubik's cube. You know what it's supposed to look like. If I said, what's a solved Rubik's cube look like? You'd say all the sides are all the same color. That's how it's supposed to look. I know what the solution looks like. If I toss you an unsolved Rubik's cube, very few of us could just solve it. Even if we know the answer, you can't just do it because it's a skill or a practice that needs to be attributed to doing that activity. Same thing goes with what, what it takes to make a choice. That last move, whether it's solved or unsolved on a Rubik's Cube, takes a second. 
We can go through our whole lives holding on to certain problems or certain perspectives or different belief systems inside of us on why we do what we do. But then you'll have a moment where I call it rock bottom. Tony Robbins calls it a crisis situation where what you're doing comes to a head. And the choice is no longer able to continue forward without consequence. Consequence now rears its ugly head and says, now you have to deal. It changes the way you make your decision now because the consequence is immediate. So example, uh, smoking. And you can smoke and get an instant gratification for stress relief, but you know inevitably it's going to lead towards lung cancer or breathing defects or things that are going to slow you down eventually that day comes and it could be <laughs> your lungs collapsing it could be cancer it could be something that shows up to say now you have to make an immediate decision on whether you live or die quitting becomes easy then i've seen people cold turkey in that moment because the choice takes one second sticking to it that's the that's the real choice over and over again do you keep doing it being an emotional eater. We've had a lot of emotional eaters and everything's a choice all the way to just a mile a day. Emotional eating is a decision that's conscious. Like you don't realize you created an autopilot that's going to go in a direction to make you just keep adding weight, but you do have to do a series of decisions to get up to do it. Do I stand up? Do I walk to the cupboard? Do I open the cupboard? Do I pick which food? Pull that food out. Then I got to open and or start eating from whatever container it is it's already in. Do I finish the entire bag or the entire box? Like there's a series of choices that have to happen for you to do this activity. Again, you click that sucker on autopilot. You don't even realize where it's going, but it's always going. But if you can catch, wait a second. I'm not an emotional eater. I'm just making these decisions over and over again to keep doing something that makes me happy for a minute, but long term leads me to feeling miserable, depressed. Uh, I feel guilty. I start feeling really bad about what I'm doing, how I look, how I feel. It even lead, can lead you towards diabetes and lead you towards a heart disease, high blood pressure. You start having different issues simply because you're trying to find an instant gratification in a way that you've identified yourself as an emotional eater. Oh, the systems that we create. But if you turn your awareness all the way up to seeing what it is as far as my decisions that I'm making and what happens with that, it makes it so you're able to see that you always have control. But it just takes one second for you to make the decision or the choice to say, I'm not doing this again. I know that I grew up in a very hostile environment and I was a hostile person. And I even acted in hostility towards other people. And I remember having a moment where I punched through a car window and scared the crap out of somebody. And I realized I'm becoming a monster. I'm becoming a terrible person, even in my own standards. I'm not going to do this anymore. I choose. I'm going in this very second to stop being what would essentially be an abusive human being. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be that guy. And in that one second of decision, I changed my entire belief system, my entire upbringing, my entire development. Everything that I've ever known, I decided I will go against. And I made a decision in a moment, one second, that I will not be what I was shown to be. I will not be the way I was treated. That's where I say everything is a choice. It's always right in front of you the whole time. It always has been. And so that's why it's important for us to recognize those rock bottom moments, the moments where the crisis situation comes up. It's inevitable. Now, no different than a New Year's resolution, you don't have to wait until New Year's to make the decision to do something about it. You can do it whenever you have the thought. And that's why practicing awareness makes it so those decisions and opportunities that are hidden in your blind spot now can get exposed and make it so you can look at the simplicity of the decision Remove the old barriers, remove the filters, remove the blame, the shame, the judgments, and say, what do I want? And then you can make a decision to start doing things about it. That's the foundation for everything is a choice. Now, damn, I just went on for what? That's an extra 15 minutes of just talking. So 
Look at yourself. Look at what you've got. And if you're struggling, the answer is it makes sense. There is no training on this. And so finding a mentor or somebody who's like, hey, I'm going to guide you through being able to see what you've got so you can make the decision to do something about it. That's just fast forwarding years of you becoming what, a psychologist? You becoming your own therapist? Let's be serious. Fast forward yourself a few decades of just listening to somebody like me or there's multiple other guys who do this. Talk to somebody who's able to go, let's break it down. We all have different ways we learn. We all have different things that we need. I go more logic. Some people are more emotional. Some people are spiritual. Figure out what it is that you connect with and then make the choice to do something about it. Otherwise, you just run on autopilot and pay attention to where's this thing going? Everything I'm doing is on autopilot. But really, it's just choices that you're just not taking accountability for. So much to unwrap. Anyways, some of you, I just blew your minds. Some of you want more. Click another episode if you want to. Subscribe to some stuff. Do all the things. You know the buttons. And for those of you who haven't seen any of this stuff yet, check out more of it. There's a lot of episodes of this that are coming, a lot of episodes that have been done, and there's going to be more and more people who are interacting with this thing to make it fun and exciting and different perspectives. Leave a comment, say some stuff. I want to hear from you. And uh, yeah, if as soon as you start realizing how all of this stuff works, you'll realize too that your autopilot and things around you, it's just like everything. It's a choice.